Welcome to this uh, DSC community call uh, again. Um, first information, that's the last uh, DSC community call you could see in the ICS calendar that we share. So we will uh, recreate one. So make sure that you keep track of the information. You, you, probably Twitter is the best uh, way to, to um, have notifications about what we're doing, the at DSC community. Uh, Twitter handle, and then we'll generate a new calendar uh, with the, f uh, the next few um, DSC community calls. It's happening every six weeks, so um, it, it doesn't change. It's not going to be delayed. Next one is uh, 14th of July, and we will send a new ICS calendar and tell you about it. Today, we will look quickly at the re uh, recently released modules. There's not too many for once, so uh, that's going to be easier. We worked um, a fair bit on the tooling. There's uh, still more to be done. And then we will do a presentation of Azure Policy Guest Configuration. So uh, we should have Michael around who's joining us. Oh, he's there. Hi, Michael. You're muted. So Michael and myself will. Uh, ah, he's there. So Michael and myself will present. Um, Azure Policy Guest Configuration will tell you what it is and how it's related to DSC. Um, but before we dive uh, too deep into that, we will just have a quick update of the recently uh, released modules. Um, as you may or may know, actually, uh, that's a good question. If you use the hands, uh, if you have access to it, there's a button in your Teams that allows you to raise your hands. If it's your first DSC community call and uh, just raise your hand so we have a rough ID. That's good. There's just a few. Okay, good. So you've been there before. You um, Most of you have been there before. And uh, what we do is we release uh, continuously. There's new uh, DSC resource modules that are being released to the partial gallery. Um, as uh, contributions Go uh, as uh, our merge to master. There will be a pre-release, and when the maintainers decide, they will just release it. So uh, we just summarize what has been released since uh, what's the latest release, at least since uh, the last DSC community call. If you want to look for more information, the PowerShell Gallery is where you will find all the releases and all the modules and the GitHub uh, DSC community uh, organization. So GitHub.com/DSCCommunity you will see all the repositories that are um, that we release and then in the sorry for each repository in the release tabs you will see the latest releases and what's available if you have any question we always are on slack um, so aka.ms slash ps slack and there's the same for discord um, so the last release is so dns um, maybe johan you want to take this one so i know dns server dsc has been released v3 which is a breaking change uh, because it used to be called x dns server if i'm yep. correct so yeah go ahead you can explain what has changed and and why is it a big deal uh that what has changed is uh, uh we have renamed the, uh, the module that's the biggest change i guess so in x dns server uh, version 2 we released a lot of uh, new resources made a few breaking changes as well, but we, thanks to James, who was with us in this call here, uh, made a lot of uh, class-based resources for uh, DNS records. And that uh, work was continued in uh, when we renamed the repo to DNS server DSC, and we uh, continue adding uh, more resources and um, I think we added uh, more record types too, I think, James, right? Uh, so uh, basically, this is the one we will continue releasing from now. XDNS server is deprecated uh, as of version 2. So DNS server DC is where we go from, uh, forward from here. So that's basically it. Cheers. And then, uh, OK, config manager CBDSC. Um, has been released. I don't know if the maintainers are online right now. I can't see everyone, but if you're online, feel free to give us a shout. Uh, I don't know exactly the changes to that one, but I believe uh, there's a lot of, that's been going, a lot of work has been going on. I just see the, the commits and stuff. Um, they've been pretty quiet at the beginning and then took some time to release V1, but like they are doing V2 now. And 
and I think uh, yes, there's a lot of code being there. So if you're using uh, Config Manager, feel free to ping them. Uh, look at the repository, open issues over there. And uh, yes, yeah, so there's still more work going on. Uh, XPS desired state configuration. Uh, we still need to bring that one uh, to SQRM, but uh, one day we'll get there. Uh, we need to rename it, and, and that's the discussion we we have every now and then, quite regularly actually. And file content DSC, iSCSI DSC, security policy DSC, networking DSC, and file system DSC. Anything uh, to say on those one, Daniel? Um, yeah, XPS, I think um, there's a couple of PRs we want to get through before we release that one. One's uh, Raymond's one and the other one's the auto documentation. And networking DSC is really due to go out, but it, it, we're just waiting on one PR to go through, and that's the proxy settings changes. So once that goes through, we can we'll do a, do a, a full release. So uh, any time in the next couple of weeks. But if you need it earlier, uh, let us know. There is a number of fixes in those, in, specifically in networking DSC and XPS. Cheers. Okay, tooling would you? Sorry. Yeah, it's Brian, sorry to interrupt. As far as security DSC or security policy DSC uh, release on that guy, I know that we have V3 is breaking change. Do you know when we'll release to the gallery as a V3 and not preview? Um, so, sorry, maybe you already told me. So I know you, you, we, you were working on this and basically we can release it to the gallery whenever uh, it's been tested and you're happy with it. I know you were working on it, so I'm pretty sure you already tested the preview six. But uh, just pick me tomorrow or tonight, and then I will try to release it tomorrow or tonight. Well, probably tomorrow. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. No worries. I just forgot about it. If you don't shout, I just forgot. All right. Um, and okay, so yes, yeah, so uh, DSC Resource Common is getting some updates. So, so that's some changes in the toolings. Uh, if you're not familiar, DSC Resource Common is something that you can use in any uh, resource module. It helps you uh, doing something. So for instance, managing uh, um, localization so you can have different files. We have some uh, common lets that you can use in your resource module to, uh, to make it simpler to have a different language. And uh, it also helps you doing comparison of the state. So um, if you have, if you know uh, what the state uh, that you would desire for your resource, and then you know what you get with the get, then you can compare this, and it's very easy to you then use it, um, uh, use that compare functions to have reasons. And we discussed reasons in previous call. That's basically what we used to put only in verbose messages. Instead of, of having verbose messages, the reasons give information back when you do a get and as an example this is used by guest configuration to uh, show up in your um, in your portal and maybe michael will actually uh, show us some some of those uh, sampler there's uh, the sampler as you know is the uh, framework that we use and uh, the templating that we use to create new resources new modules um, there's still more work that go there more automation works that, that are going into this and um, that really is specifically i don't know what it was probably a fix for uh, some uh, pipeline automation um maybe you and you remember yeah we added uh, uh, more is is uh, actually it's PESTA 5 support, full the PESTA 5 support. Very important uh, one, yes. Yeah. We support PESTA 5 now. <laughs> you see, so many things going on. But yeah, PESTA 5 is not supported. So if you want to upgrade your uh, PESTA 4.10 uh, um, um, uh, test that you have for the DSC resource modules, then you can use PESTA 5 now. And it should be transparent to you when you use Sampler. It's just a matter of updating your required modules that PSD1 instead of having uh, probably like the maximum version of 4.10.1, you can just remove that to latest and that will use uh, with a new resolve dependency that will use uh, PEST 5.2, I think is the current one. So that's a big release actually. It's quite important. So today, uh, today it's about guest configuration, and we're lucky because uh, we have Michael Green, who's the PM here. Uh, Michelle was hiding just now because she knew I was getting to this. Uh, Michelle is working for the guest configuration team as well, the engineering team. And um, 
Michael is uh, the program manager. Michael, maybe you want to uh, uh, present yourself for those who don't know you. I think everyone knows you, but just in case. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm Michael Green. I'm the program manager uh, for configuration management across Azure and Azure Connected. And uh, I'll give you the full lay of the land for um, all the things we've been working on as we go through the overview. Um, so, actually, um, when I was present preparing this, I realized that uh, one year to date, we released that uh, uh, PowerShell Conference EU um, uh, session, uh, which was DSC is dead, long live DSC, because um, we were like a lot of things were in the plans, in the pipelines, but um, we like guest configuration was getting there, a lot of features getting there. But uh, not everything could be uh, shared, and I think today, one year to date, is a, it's, it's quite interesting because um, we're going to show some of the things probably we discussed or, or we hinted towards um, during that call. But if you want to have a better understanding of where it's coming from, then definitely I recommend uh, watching this uh, session. So maybe, Michael, you can uh, very yeah. quickly summarize what, what is guest configuration, and if you want to share something, feel free to. Okay, so I'm going to start off at a very high level and then we're going to immediately go very very deep level uh, so i will share my screen and please confirm whenever you can see a browser yep yeah we can see the browser okay great so to start off at a high level where did this come from uh so we it's amazing how time has flown by, flown by. but uh, you know we were the, the last time that many of us actually got together and talked over these things and planning was uh, PowerShell Conf EU in person. And you know at that time we had big plans to reinvest in DSC and uh, many of you, you know, may have been in that room. And so not too long after that, we just we took a step back and the decision was made, Okay, DSC today uh, as a commercial solution in Azure requires an automation account. You've got Azure Automation DSC, uh, then you have DSC extension. And out of those things, you have this balance where it's like Azure Automation is a window, is, is a is a uh, a pull service similar to Windows pull server, but hosted. And you upload your configurations and your modules, and then you register your machines and assign them and use them that way. And then you have DSC extension, which is like a one-time run the configuration, no reporting or anything like that, but it's very, very simple. You create a zip file, put all your stuff in it, and just say, when the machine is deployed, run this configuration. And after talking to a lot of customers, uh, what was actually determined is that the biggest problem to solve in the area of configuration management is really around compliance because like looking at this from an oper operations point of view solving the problem of uh, like construct a web server is super important to us working in operations but if you look at what's driving the organization it's like if we conduct credit card transactions do we meet the requirements for pci dss or if we're in healthcare, it's HIPAA, right? and you know, on and on and on through the regulatory compliance stuff. And so, Azure policy at the time was, you know, uh, somewhat early still, and it was able to look at things happening in Azure, but couldn't reach inside machines and tell you what was going on there. So we made a hard pivot and um, decided let's continue down the path of let's reinvent DSC, but. Uh, let's make it something that is just a native configuration management platform in Azure and then extend it outside of Azure. And what that means is don't to create an automation account. It should just be something that's associated with a machine that you can assign a configure. You can assign as many configurations as you want to a machine really is the, is the goal and the idea. And um, the reporting should just be baked in. You should be able to get it from things like resource graphs so that big data queries and that kind of tooling is just automatic. It should write to the activity log. Like this should really be a first class thing. And so what we've been spinning up and, and getting to stable and implementing many lessons learned over the last couple of years is using DSC as a platform within Azure policy to do audits. And if you think about like if you're getting ready to grow aggressively, 
uh, audits are sort of a read only capacity. Like you're just going to see what's there on the machine. You're not injecting changes yet. So the, the risk is very mitigated and um, we've grown rapidly. We're supporting a very, very high volume of machines now. Um, but what I wanted to show on this first page is where would I even go find this stuff? And if you go into Azure, uh, Azure policy is there as something that you would look at. You know, the, the idea behind Azure policy is originally like, I want to control that storage accounts are not created outside of my geography because it breaks my data sovereignty requirements, things like that. Um, and so this idea of what's going on inside of machines becoming part of that, uh, we had to kind of figure out how would you take something outside of the Azure API and extend it. And obviously you're not going to take every registry key and file and daemon and package and so forth and just expose that into ARM. It would literally be tens of thousands of things. So we broke this down into scenarios. And if you look at it, this from an audit point of view on my screen here, you can see when I went to policy definitions and I filtered to the category guest configuration, um, and I've set my type to just policy and an, an initiative is a group of policies. And then I've set my type here to built in to avoid the chaos of my environment where I've got tons of custom things I've created for POCs. Um, you get the idea of scrolling through this list of what we've been working on. Like we're going to look on who's, we're going to give you the ability to look at who's in the administrators group. Uh, we, we've got several instances in here that are carrying forward settings that you would have seen in group policy. Um, we've got uh, light things like, you know, go look and see what, what time zone the machine is in. Um, some of the more interesting ones that have come up based on customer request were things like uh, look for pending reboots. And we have one that you can tell it a time frame, and it will go look for certificates that are going to expire. Turns out that was one of those scenarios that like monitoring platforms don't really look for it because it's not an application error. Uh, and it's a good example of uh, where compliance can actually refer to operational compliance as opposed to security compliance. Uh, so there's the pending reboot policy. And if I scroll up, we'll find the... I think I've scrolled past it. And there is actually one that would just go look at Windows PowerShell DSC configurations and whichever is active for that machine, it's going to check and see if it's reporting compliant or not. So we're sort of blending the technologies there. And so some, uh, I'll let Gail, when he talks about the module, kind of talk about DSC v3 and coexistence with Windows PowerShell and things like that. Um, but I want to explain that this is this is using the things that Gail is going to be showing when he talks about the module and, and what's actually happening inside the machine. Um, so now that you've seen this at a high level, let me show two quick things. Um, so one is, you know, there was a very quick finding that's like, well, if I'm looking at, uh, you know, members missing from the administrators group, or we have a new policy that's like, you should only have local accounts that are, that are provided as an inbound parameter that are on a list. But if it comes back just not compliant, then how do I know which accounts on the machine made it not compliant? Uh, so we have this new UX, um, and you'll see this referenced a lot soon in the documentation, and you see evidence here of my failed proof of concepts that I run on an almost daily basis and try different things. Uh, but this is looking at something that we're about to see in raw API language, but I want to look at it visually first and that is the concept of a guest assignment. And the guest assignment, the thing that's being assigned here is a configuration. Now in this case, they're just being used for audit, but I wanna start thinking about this as a configuration that could be enforced as well. So if we look at this machine, um, you can see that the guest assignment exists. Nope, actually that machine's been offline, so it's resource not available. Uh, what we would have seen there is a list of, it would actually be this information if I just do a mouse over, but present it in a, prettier way that text is relatively small but what it's saying there is this machine has the following enabled user accounts non-compliant bad admin and then compliant was nothing was provided so um, it was a proof of concept to make sure we could detect an account named bad admin that was not approved for the machine so i want to take a very close look at what exactly would lead to that level of data and i'm going to bring over postman so now we're going to tend just just a few minutes, I'm not gonna spend an hour going through this because I don't want everybody to just freak out about how complicated things could be. But for people who are really interested in what's going on, how how does this 
assign a configuration to a machine and how do the details flow back? We're going to take a very, very deep dive on that for just a few minutes. So first, what I want to understand is what the heck is Microsoft.guest configuration? So that is a type. If you think about the API for cloud and that, you know, the first type, like if you look at this as a path, almost like a file path, so it's saying in management.azure.com, you have subscriptions and then subscription ID is being fed into this query as a variable. And then you have resource groups, which is a way of grouping things together. And so that, that name is also being passed in. And then you have providers. So the first one we get to is virtual machines, right? And then that virtual machine is being passed in as a variable name. And you could actually stop there and you would get details of a virtual machine, like what size it is and is it running and what's its name and, you know, does it have a network interface and stuff like that. But then we're going to go providers again and go to Microsoft.guest configuration. And what that means is that the configuration is an extension of the machine. So literally this is like a file path and looking at it like a subfolder. I've got a subscription in the cloud. I've got a group of things inside there. I created a machine and now I have configurations associated with that machine, right? And so if I get down to the, the closer to the leaf on the tree, sort of working our way from the tree trunk out through the branches towards the leaf, we have this notion of guest configuration assignments. And that's what we were just looking at there in the UX. And then you can see it's got an API version associated with the query. So let's go to the bottom half of my screen here. And what happens if I, and, and this is very, very raw, I understand, but I want to look at this at like the most technical level. Um, what happens if you just use Postman and you go get a token and you query that path, right? I've got a mach virtual machine here, UB20, Ubuntu 20, um, and it's got a configuration assignment for local user underscore Linux. And uh, I'm doing a get request, go get this configuration for that path and give me the details. And it's saying, yep, it came back non-compliant. Um, you see some interesting details here. Uh, let's see, the assignment hash is there because this accepts parameters. Um, so if we actually looked at what parameters were provided here, you can see what, what accounts are being excluded and that that's where the parameters uh, were flowing in when the original put request was given. Um, so we have a hash Hello? value. Yeah. Yep, yep. Do you guys this. see what Michael is talking about? Are you Does seeing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we do. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can okay. see. Had me worried for a minute. <laughs> okay, because I'm only seeing the Azure portal, nothing else. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and reshare just to make sure that Teams does what it's supposed to do. Let me try one Thank more. Thank you. Time. Let me know if it comes up now. It works now, thank yeah. you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay. This should be more clear if you can see it than if you can't see it. <laughs> oh, I, I could see, so I could follow, so yeah. Okay, okay, very good. Um, and then you see this latest report ID. So the idea is underneath that guest assignments, there's reports, and then you see a GUID for each report that has come in. Uh, and then I'll, I'll get close to wrapping this up here just by looking at the metadata. We'll, t we'll look at one report uh, if it's still available. I'm not sure if that machine's reports are still available, but I just wanted to take a closer look at these uh, properties because they'll probably, if, if you've used Azure configuration uh, through Azure Automation in the past or, or DSC extension, they probably look pretty familiar. Uh, so the one is, here's the concept of the zip package, which, uh, um, we're about to walk through actually with the module how to create that zip package. You'll see that there's a hash value and that's because the person who's managing the cloud environment might be different than the person who is the developer creating that package. So in order to trust each other, you take a, you publish this to a location and then in your uh, guest assignment, you take a hash value so you know it hasn't changed since it was assigned. Um, there's a notion of inbound parameters. And then uh, you see, you know, monitor only as the configuration mode that makes sense versus like apply and autocorrect um, reboot and frequency and that kind of stuff is the same as what you've seen for DSC in the past. So the idea of um, what I mentioned at the beginning that Azure automation was a service that allowed the machine to pull down assets, apply a configuration and handle reports, whereas DSC extension 
was simpler to manage, more simple to manage, but didn't give you reporting. What we've tried to do here is the best of both worlds to say, okay, let's do a really good job in PowerShell and build a module that makes authoring really good. And then once that package is created, you can just store it anywhere the machine can access over HTTPS. And that's what you're seeing here. But let's have built-in reporting. So it should be as simple as just assigning it when the machine is provisioned, but then your reports come through here. Let me see, I'm not confident that this is gonna come up, but we'll give it a try anyway. And that's because I don't know if this machine has been running Nope. Okay. It it uh, that that report doesn't exist. There's a record of it, but I've had that machine offline for too long, I believe. Yeah, um, and that's okay. So I need to speed this up anyway, so that uh, Gail has plenty of time to walk through the mod module. Uh, I'm going to change the application on my machine one more time, and just show one quick thing. Is everybody see VS Code now? Uh yeah. Yes. And let me just make sure that. Well, I don't want to waste time. I was going to zoom in real quick. Uh, so same concept. What if instead of using policy, which is how you would say for, I, I'm going to go, you know, create 200 machines in, in a new big enterprise application. And, you know, I, I want Azure policy to make sure that as they're deployed, they automatically get handled you know, either for audits or in the future applying a configuration, right? So it's the at scale experience. But what if I'm just deploying one machine? And what if I'm not doing it through the Azure portal? What if I, if my tools of choice are Ansible or Terraform or Puppet, right? And I'm still interacting with ARM, but I'm using a different abstraction. And so in this case, one of the things that we've just started working through is what does this look through? What does this look like as Terraform? So we now have a Terraform plugin for guest configuration, and in this quick example, you would see, uh, you know, you're describing the resource group, the network, all the things we were just looking at, as well as the machine, and then you would see it has the machine extension for guest configuration, which is, you know, like Azure doesn't have the ability to reach inside of your machine and do anything until you add an extension and tell the extension what to do, because it's your machine. So we have an extension there that is like how things get conducted inside the machine. And then you have the guest assignments. And in this case, it's saying Windows baseline, which is actually 199 settings for best practices for Windows that you would find as an Azure policy. So in this case, this is all happening completely outside of Azure policy. It's just saying you could do Terraform plan, see what changes are going to happen, Terraform apply, and it would actually go create the environment, create the machine, assign the configuration, and you would see that as you refresh your Terraform data. And the same would be true for other tools. So if your tool of choice is that you want to use Ansible to manage Azure from ARM, you could actually have Ansible call guest config and take built-in configurations or a configuration that you create yourself using the tools that Gail's about to show you and assign that as something that Azure just natively understands as a configuration um, to be applied. So Gail, I will hand off to you. I know you I probably took more time than you had in mind. Um, no, no, actually, no, actually, that's great. I don't have that much to show because uh, it's uh, pretty simple. But uh, there was a there, there were a question, uh, maybe more than one. And uh, one of the question was, will this compete against salt? And, and I, I waited exactly. I waited uh, to Good to. Question. Yeah, I waited for you to go to that end and you just showed actually uh, like it, it doesn't compete. It's a complement and, and maybe you want to expand on that. Well, the only thing I would add, and I, I put this in the docs for audit, but it becomes much more relevant for set uh, that this can act as a wrapper for any tool. So if it turns out that uh, like th this actually becomes a very interesting extension of your skill set as a DSC expert. But if you wanted to have, like, let's say that your organization already has a bunch of configurations built out in Salt, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, you know, anything, right? For or maybe maybe just a bunch of scripts that you keep in, in a library, uh, you could have DSC act as a wrapper. And so I've played around with this already uh, for Chef. But the idea was like, you know, you, you at, the, at the end of the day, it's just PowerShell. So inside of Get, Set, and Test you can have it call 
any binary that you want. Now, it would be up to you to pre-stage those binaries on the machine. And of course, like the licensing of that third party tool is all up to you and that sort of thing. But you certainly could have a DSC resource that just calls, uh, you know, any binary you want. And then the secret sauce, uh, which, which is some of the things that uh, Gail's going to talk about, is parsing the output and returning it in a way that the service will render in the portal. And then you sort of become a little bit of having like a superpower within your organization, because now you can take your existing investment and use that with these tools so that it's an integrated story in Azure. Um, so that's an interesting thing that I'd like to explore further in the future. Yes, so so you can use another tool, as, as uh, Michael said, you can use another tool to use guest config. You can use another tool within guest config. Like uh, it doesn't necessarily compete uh, with the tooling. So uh, does it replace or does it compete with salt? Not really. So whatever you need, you just have more options to uh, to do it. Um, is there any questions for Michael while we're here? I, I don't have that much to to show anyway, so uh, so there's no rush. We you can take a couple of questions and then I will uh, jump into a quick demo and I will go back a bit. Okay, you've seen a lot of details about okay what's the policy, so I will take it back a little bit and then uh, look at what uh, how to create a package. How to create a policy? What can, is the kind of difference between between the two? Uh, I have a question on what user account does the does the configuration runs? Is it still in the system account or? Yeah, yep. Okay. And, and and just as before, you can specify an alternative, but the default is the same. Yeah. Ah, okay, thank you. No more questions. All right, uh, let me share my screen. I had a few, but uh, they uh, are not in a hurry. <laughs> Yeah, you. I know. I know how much you've done and how much you've blogged. So actually, I should have put your blog post uh, as a link in the slides. But uh, uh, you will ask your questions later because I think you're more advanced than most. <laughs> we'll, we'll stay later for your questions. All right. So if you see my slides, I will go. Uh, I probably have uh, three slides, and then I will jump into a demo. So okay. So what's a guest configuration package to start with? Uh, well, you take a configuration document, and at the moment, that's a MOF. Uh, that may change the future if you followed uh, what the PowerShell is doing, uh, the PowerShell team is doing, but at the moment, it's a MOF, and that's your configuration document. And then you look at the MOF, uh, what's in that MOF, um, you have you know definitions of the resource modules, DSC resource modules, uh, and then basically you take the dependencies, so the resource modules required for this MOF, uh, you add a bit of metadata, and I'm probably going to get a, a bit more details um, later. And when this is done, you just package everything into a zip file, and that pretty much is your um, is your guest configuration package. Pretty simple. What do you do with the package? Well, not much, because if it's just a package or your machine, it doesn't really, uh, uh, it's, it can't be consumed by the Azure service. But you can at least create this package locally and then make sure this package works. That's something I'm going to show today. Um, but to zip it and to do it for you, there's a module, which is the guest configuration module that uh, Michelle was online, or at least was online earlier, and uh, she's uh, she's built that. Um, and it really helps you, and actually Michael as well has worked on this, like a lot of people have worked on this over time, but uh, we're making some changes right now because there's more features coming up, uh, which you can see on this slide already, which is the latest uh, item. Um, so the idea is you create a new package, and that's what the new guest configuration package does for you. And uh, this new package is uh, give it a MOF, and then it will be able to compile the package for you just based on the MOF, as long as the resource modules are in your uh, PS module path. So uh, you will be able to create the package like this, then you put the package somewhere, and then we'll get into more details where you can create the policy and consume the policy uh, based on that. But what you can do for testing purposes, you can install the package into your system as long as you have it, even locally, and then you can get the status of this package. If you remember, uh, that's a DSC configuration document. So you can say, hey, look at every resource um, declared into that, into that MOF and get me the status of this. And then we can compare if it's um, 
tell me if it's compliant or not. And that's what you can use with the get guest configuration package compliance status. So you just create a package, install that package into your system, get the information of that system, and then um, the new thing that's coming up is the start, which is uh, being able to remediate uh, the problem. So let's say you have a non-compliance system. This is what you use to deal with the with the start command for DSC. Uh, very similar uh, principles, slightly different commandlets, but uh, the idea is the same. You apply the configuration that you've defined. So that is the authoring experience. So when you create a package, you want to make sure uh, first of all, you can audit. The audit is correct. That means it returns the right data, whether it's compliant or not compliant. So if you're writing a resource module and then this resource module is used in a guest configuration package, the same as you would do with a resource module, which just validate that it works. So you have integration tests that run those things. And uh, when you see that it gets the information that you expect, good thing, you will try to remediate it if you uh, enable it not just for audit but for uh, the set scenario. Uh, some scenarios are better suited to only audit. Maybe you don't want your DSC to uh, the DSC resources to let's say change a certificate on the fly, but at least you want to report. So that's more an audit scenario. And then some scenarios maybe was in the administrator group or was into a specific group. That's something that you want to set. If something is not compliant, you want to remediate that. And that's why you have the remediation, which is an option for a package. And um, so that's the that's the scenario how you would create the package, make sure, make sure the package work. And then when you have your package, you can get the policy, you can publish that package into somewhere um, uh, available for, as Michael said, uh, an HTTPS URI that you can then use in Azure to, uh, like a blob storage, so you can use it in Azure to uh, create a policy. So the idea is you publish that package and then you create, a you create a policy and you publish that policy to your Azure so then you can consume it as Michael uh, showed you. Uh, that part, I'm not going to show it, at least I'm not going to show it today. Uh, maybe if there's interest, we can come back and then uh, give more information later. Uh, the other thing I'm going to say before I go to the demo is what you are going to see now is not. Not everything is released yet. There's a pre-release of this guest configuration module, uh, which is the preview 001. So uh, you will find out on the partial gallery. And you can already, for Windows at least, uh, you can do uh, most of the things I'm going to show today. Um, for Linux, uh, there's a bit more work going on right now, and there's a few changes that we're doing. We're showing that to you specifically now, which is the first time we, it's the first time we're showing it, uh, mainly so we can get more feedback, and then you can have an early preview, and you can start playing with this and know what's going on, so you can uh, see how you can use and design maybe your DSC resource uh, so that uh, they would be uh, useful using case configuration. So um, let's go with the demo. And and I'll show you. So first of all, uh, this is my current system I'm working on. It's just to be uh, but uh, so oops, sorry, that's an issue. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is a Windows this, uh, Linux distro, sorry, and to be more precise, this one is a Ubuntu, okay? And I have a module here which is called NX Tools that I've been working on, sorry. And um, these modules are some commands that could be useful. So uh, local group, items, and some of the information about um, um, archive, local group, local users, the usual. So if you if you've seen before the DSC resource for Linux, uh, that's pretty that's very similar to what existed before. Uh, it's just uh, written differently, and this is very like this is very much written so then it could be used uh, for guest configuration. So there are some DSC resource, uh, not much at the moment. This is still work in progress, but I will show you at least one today. I will present that. Can you see it? Hopefully, uh, I'm going to shut that one for now. Hopefully, you can see this and it's not too small. Let me know otherwise. 
No one's complaining, so I'll keep carry on. I'm going to hide this. So you've been using Sampler, I guess. Uh, most of you have. Sampler is, as I said, uh, the tooling and the templating that um, uh, that we use at the DS in the DSC community. Uh, the idea is very similar. This is Sampler, the same thing as we were doing before. Um, it's just a, uh, a PowerShell module in this case, and the PowerShell module has classes, and within the classes, I've just decided to um, add some DSC resource in there. And you can see I have a few classes in there, and they're just DSC resource. Um, if you have questions, uh, feel free to write them. I can, can keep an eye on the chat. But I'm not going to do a deep dive on the resources, but I want to show you something which is really important, which is the reasons. I've talked about them already uh, a few times and during the DSC community calls. This is what you can uh, use to provide information about why it's not compliant instead of just using the verbal stream. But the idea is you have your resources, which um, they are using uh, the different commandlets as we need them, and, and we're using as well the dscresource.command uh, module to simplify uh, writing. You see it's only 400 uh, lines for this uh, resource. And there's something to know about, which is uh, at the moment, I would say it's a limitation of um, guest configuration and maybe Michael can explain a bit more about this, but you are limited with the types you can use. And sometimes, uh, if I see one of them here, uh, maybe that's the file, it's not a good one. Let's do the group. Sometimes are not supported. So guest configuration doesn't support an array of string. It supports a string, but the good thing when you use classes is you can extend them. So you can extend your class this one just to support at the moment a string separator. So you can have an array with a string separator and that just adds a few lines uh, so then you can manage the join when you get the data back and the split when you set the data. So not a big limitation, but that's something to know. I think if I remember correctly, it's because of the API in uh, Azure yep. policy that doesn't support um, uh, the, the arrays. Uh, that might change, and that's definitely something we are aware, or the, the guest config team is aware. It's at and the moment. A lot of these templates are fed by JSON, and yeah, then, it, then it's, it's just strings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not just strings, but it's mostly just strings. Yes. So that's how, uh, so, so that's an example that, okay, there's a limitation, but if you have the right resource, extending it for guest config is pretty simple when you really need uh, as, you have to have some types like this. So the question is, we have this module, which is good, often games. Uh, we have uh, the resource when it's compiled. If you use the sampler project, you're familiar with this. Um, so now we need to create a package. So as we said, a package is based on DSC. So what do we have for uh, defining a package? We have a configuration. And from that configuration, we can compile into a MOF, and from that MOF, we can create a package. And, and that's basically what you need to do at a new package command. So let me just maybe, it's going to be slightly, no, VS Code says no, there we go. Uh, so that's just the uh, new guest configuration package. Uh, what it does is you tell it, oh, this is the MOF I want to create a package from. This is the name I want to give. Please uh, package this for me and it will look at uh, the, the content of the MOF, so basically what you've specified here, and in this case is which module, and next tools, which version, it will make sure if it's available, so hopefully it's in your path. If you use sampler, uh, it will be in your path because you probably download it or you just build it. And then um, it will look at this, it will package and zip it up um, to create a package. So if I run this, uh, you will see an error that you may be familiar with, which is, oh, there's already a class. So that's something which if you compile a MOF, you will have the same thing. If it finds twice uh, the same uh, module, or it find it twice because it's a two path overlapping or something like this, you will see that this error. I will show you later that it's not a big problem because there's a way to hide it, but I just wanted to make sure that if you try this command, you will see it. So um, let me just go back here. And you can see that uh, I provide the name, the configuration, which is the MOF, uh, which I already compiled here for saving time. And I tell it where I want the package to go. 
And I said, um, okay, error action, so I click continue, force to make sure it overrides because it's a demo and I want to, to uh, make the demo goes upset. And audit and set is uh, one of the metadata. So that will generate the metadata that we need for this package. Uh, the option are audit or audit and set. So that's when I said, or oh, Michael showed you that some things uh, can audit only. So then it reports into the, the portal or it will be audit and set, that means you can remediate as well. So I create this package and then I have my audit and set uh, package. And um, when I have this, I can now use this package with the commands, uh, which is this one here. So this is uh, my Linux systems and I will actually install uh, not the agent, sorry. Station package, and I will go with this package that I just built. So let me just actually, it's got a different name right now. So that's, uh, and that is Linux group must include .zip. And I will make sure this is installed on my current system. This is my Linux machine. It's there, and then I will do a get guest configuration compliance status, and I will again I change the name just for the just for include and it's good. So it's running this, and you are very familiar with this output, and you're familiar with the content. This is. Uh, this is very much the DSC that you know. So uh, I'll grab the result just so you see. And you Although will see. It's not the DSC for Linux that you know. Y yes, that's very different actually. First of all, this is a PowerShell class, as you've seen, which, if I remember correctly, wasn't really possible, at least not easily possible uh, before. So uh, did I run this? Yes. So what result you can see the resources there and you can see what's going on so members to include root balance and you can see include the strings this has been updated it's got the two values because there's this inheritance that we used and that's the inherited um, uh, the inherited class but that's how you use uh, that's how you use the the package we just created and validate that it does what you want let's say it doesn't uh, so at the moment, compliance status is false. So I don't know if that's going to work, but let's try. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry. Remediation. Uh, we'll go to the path, and it's output GC policy package and. Very similar, fingers crossed. That runs, and now the constitution, and you can see it finished the set and uh, looks so that's the verbose message, which doesn't look good because I've got a small window here. But you see that is the set of the DSC resources running. And uh, let's try this. So I don't know if it's going to result. So the, the, the resource is a developer and there's a few things going on. So fingers crossed. Nah, it still doesn't, it's still not compliant. That's probably my resource, which I'm working on. That's why it's on your dev and you can't see all the details. But that's the idea uh, you would uh, you would remediate the settings like this. And I had another thing I wanted to show. Oh yes, so uh, you've seen that you've got this comment and you've got all of this. But obviously you're familiar with sampler, so you don't really want to have to do this manually every time. And the idea is you can just call the familiar build.ps1 tasks GC poll, and that will build your module. That does the module, and then it will automatically if you have this GC package and then the folder containing your configuration, and then you have your configuration as we have here, and sampler will automatically compile and create this package for you. So if you look at the output, 
you have the GC package, and then you can see the package has been there. This is the unzip version of, of what is finished here, but the idea is everything is done for you. And you can see now you have the NX tools module, which is inside your package. It's the same as what we would see in the zip file. And you have these, uh, the, this one is the MOF that we compiled, and you can see the time when we compile it, which for me, that just now, uh, which I need to hurry up because it's already 5 to 10. And these other are uh, what the guest configuration module uh, requires to be in the package. And uh, obviously what you really need is the near next tools based on that MOF. So uh, that's one way. So uh, sampler at the moment only supports creating um, only supports creating an audit package. Soon we will add the metadata to that, so that it's easier to create an audit and set package, as an example. And uh, we will also uh, make it easier for you. So when you have this package and you see you have the zip package, it's not signed. That's another thing that we'll explain at another time. But uh, this one is not signed yet. If you want to sign it, there's ways to do it. There's a protect uh, um, guest configuration policy and um, then you have to upload this, and then from what is uploaded to your um, blob storage, you can create the policy, and then you can consume that policy. I haven't shown everything yet, because there's another thing I will probably cover in another time, which are the parameters. When you have a package like this, you see that I've hard-coded uh, the groups, but uh, technically those groups can be uh, updated by using, sorry, by using the uh, parameters. Uh, I'll show you uh, probably more details another time because we're running out. So if I do, uh, oh no, actually not this one, sorry. Here, I have a parameter. Um, I have a parameter uh, parameter. And the parameter parameter is parameters to the MOF. So if the MOF defines the uh, groups that must be included, uh, at the moment, my MOF is setting and you can see here, uh, to, 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 so I can't see it. It's saying root and gcolas, which is my user. Uh, you can use it to update this parameter in the MOF automatically to include some other things. So you can update the content of this variable. I'll stop here because it's nearly time. But if you have questions, now is a good time. And I can stay longer for some questions. Can you, I, or I can. Uh... There was a lot of questions about, so is this just calling get DSC configuration and start DSC configuration? Do you want to talk a little bit about the separation here? Um, it's not the same. I would, I would put it to the, the TLDR is it's not the same. So does it call it? Yes, but it's, um, so there's a lot of change going on, as you probably have seen um, in PowerShell with the uh, the SMS or Systems uh, Management Automation, DLL. Uh, and, and the partial team has been saying for a long time they want to extract the DSC um, capabilities um, from PowerShell to be everything into the uh, PSDSC, the PowerShell PS Desired State Configuration Module that is uh, still not open source, but that should be eventually. Uh, the idea is taking out these uh, commandlets that used to be uh, start the LCM, uh, update the uh, set the LCM and um, get um, the get the configuration. So that is being extracted and this is not anymore in there because there's no more LCM. So the guest configuration module is using the same principles but with a brand new agent with uh, I would say a brand new system. So there's not much to compare there. Does that answer the question, Michael? Yeah, and, and <clears throat> I wanted to make sure everybody understands, technically, you can run this side by side with Windows PowerShell. Oh, yeah. I'm not a Windows PowerShell DSC to explain that. Now, not saying I recommend that, <laughs> but there's nothing technically that would prevent you from doing it. There's also nothing technically that would help with conflict resolution. So if you tried to manage the same setting using the two, they're on their own 15 minute intervals, both handling the same setting. But uh, the 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 architecture of this is, this is all in PowerShell core, completely separate from what's going on in Windows PowerShell 5.1 or the DSC that was baked into Windows 
uh, the, as it shipped, including the LCM and Windows. So the role of LCM in what you see on the screen share here is in the module being provided because the module includes a copy of the agents for Windows and Linux that are used in Azure and Arc outside of Azure. So the, it's, it's playing the role of LCM in a standalone fashion. And what he's seeing here is basically passing commands uh, using p invoke off to the the agent binaries. So you're um, you're you're effectively running those tests on your machine using the agent that that, that to, to to evaluate the impact using the agents that um, you would use in production either in Azure or through an Arc uh, scenario outside of Azure, um, of which there are many hybrid different hybrid scenarios there. So. There's lots to explore here um, because the new LCM, as I was kind of hinting at earlier, you don't have to worry about partial configurations and that kind of stuff. You can just assign multiple configurations. Um, you could have three configurations that are performing audits and two that are doing applying configurations and the agent is just going through them all and you don't have to tell it in advance uh, to expect those configurations the way that you did with uh, partial configurations. It just handles each of them independently. So there's there's lots of new things to go explore here. Any more question? There is one thing that comes up frequently, and um, KV knows this very well. So does Gail. That uh, in building the existing audits policies, one of the so uh, the agent has been running PowerShell Core six point two. Uh, to run those audits. And while seven has really good backwards compatibility in PowerShell, six sort of hit or miss. And so there's several examples, uh, and all of these are published as open source, but there's several examples where found a scenario where in PowerShell core, it didn't have what it needed to be successful in calling commandlets that were in PowerShell 5.1. So we're just shelling out, which means like right there in the middle of the script, it calls PowerShell.exe, runs the commands that needed to be run, takes the output, and then keeps on working in PowerShell core, which is kind of a neat trick. But that's something that we're going to have to, like, one of the things on my mind here is we have the existing community modules and we, we don't, we, we want them to just carry forward. And so there's gonna be some, I would imagine, that we find a gap and, and just say like, hey, this worked in five, but not in seven, what do we do? And we're just gonna have to work through it. I, by and large, it looks like that's not happening. It's, it's not, it's, it doesn't seem like it's something that every module will encounter or that every resource will encounter. But when we do, we have identified some patterns that can get us through it without having to rewrite the whole module. Performance hit doing that? I would think so, but I, I haven't seen it. So uh, when this is being run through an extension, it's actually constra uh, resource constrained. Um, extensions are not allowed to take up more than I think five percent uh, for the machine total, and so there's a lot going on there to make sure that it's constrained. So even it, what what that means is it would cause the job to run longer, but not consume more resources on the machine. All right, uh, we are five minutes over time. Is there more questions? Feel free to ask questions. We can, if there's no big questions right now, we can stop the recording and then carry on chatting for those who wants to have more information. Um, obviously we were limited by the time. Is there things that you want to see? Uh, feel free to uh, let us know. Uh, maybe probably not today, but like uh, we can do another session. We can create a video of outside. If you have more questions about the DSC community, uh, what we're doing and how, what we need to do, I would say for that. Um, uh, we talked already about the reasons. We are working on improving the toolings. And when the tooling will be ready, we will tell you, or well, probably we're going to write a blog post say exactly, okay, if you want to enable the reasons, which is used whether you use DSC or whether you want to use DSC or within guest configuration or not, uh, we'll we'll get through this and we'll explain how to how to do that. But if you have questions, feel free to ask them here, uh, especially uh, today as we have Michael, Michelle, and Katie, who is also around today. So today is a good day. And Jason as well, if you have questions, maybe around the PowerShell side. 
Yeah, and I, I would wrap up um, with one additional thing that's a call to action. Uh, so uh, if, if anybody in the DSC community uh, is interested in testing this out, obviously the modules in the gallery, uh, the documentation is not live yet, so we're going to rely on this recording and get help and the, the uh, DSC uh, channel and Slack and that kind of stuff until the docs go live. Um, but, I, you know, people in the DSC community tend to be the most technical, uh, you know, the, the the most willing to sort of like be a cowboy and just go try things <laughs> before it's ready. So what we need to know is is like, hey, you got this right, but here's some things that you didn't get right or didn't think about because we can make improvements quickly. And now is a really good time to do that because we can make changes and it doesn't result in breaking anybody. Um, so it's a really good time. And, and you know, you can test these on VMs on your local machine and uh, give us feedback. So that's it for me. And if you want to try um, 